And today we're going to be talking about tap and die sets, specifically ones from, of all places, the, uh, the infamous Harbor Freight, which I know most people have kind of a love or hate relationship with. I think they're pretty good for some things. Uh, you just have to know what to get there. Most of their hand tools and stuff I've had have actually been surprisingly decent. Uh, but anyway, the story behind these tap and die sets is a buddy of mine by the name of Pete who lives up in Wisconsin and he has a channel here on YouTube that goes by Zilla Welding. Well, I've known him for about uh, three and a half years or so now and about three years ago I traveled up to Wisconsin to visit him and one day we're just hanging out and I'm like, so Pete, what kind of... Uh, you know, what kind of tap and die sets do you use? Because at the time I, I didn't have one or I had like a small one or one that sucked or whatever. And he's like, they're actually quite nice and, uh, and he's like, you know, they're not the best tap and die sets ever, but they are really good. And uh, for the price, they're pretty unbeatable, and they come in a nice carrying case, so they're really easy to move, and, um, and, and he really liked them, and, and that was the long and short of it, and I was like, okay, so, you know, maybe that's all right, and then uh, just recently, I went up to visit him again, and, and I asked him, are you still using those Harbor Freight sets? Do you still like them? He's like, oh yeah, I love them, they're awesome, they even have some, uh, some really hard to find, specifically metric tap sizes in them, maybe the SAE set has, a, has an odd size or two in there. Also, and evidently those tap sizes are pretty hard to find, and, uh, and he says they're holding up great and he uses them all the time. And keep in mind, Pete runs an industrial welding and repair company, so that's not like, you know, your average backyard hobbyist type use. He actually puts quite a few miles on these things and absolutely loves them. So I was like, all right, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the, uh, the advice there. I'm gonna go home and order a couple of these, and that's what I did. These just arrived the other day. And uh, I actually got a pretty good deal on them, even by Harbor Freight standards. Yeah, let's uh, let's tear into these and see what they're like. All right, so uh, first off, we're gonna unboxify this here metric set, and uh, it's not over packaged, which I like. It looks like we pretty much just rip it out of the box. Uh, and here we go. We got the uh, nice plastic carrying case here. At first, I kind of had my doubts about buying something like this from Harbor Freight, but with Pete's recommendation and the fact that whenever I break a, a tap or a die here, I usually just get on eBay and buy like the cheapest one straight from China and I'll order like four or five of them. So this really probably isn't much worse. And actually doing that, I've actually gotten some tools that I really like. So opening this up, you can see this looks like a uh, pretty complete set here. Um, I'll try and prop it up a little so hopefully you guys can see. Some specifications, I'm not gonna read this because ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna set this aside. Looking at these, uh, these taps, they actually look quite nice. I mean, they're properly deburred and looking at these and judging about as much as you can without actually using them, they look pretty substantial. The, the coating on them is absolutely beautiful. It says here they have a titanium nitride coating, which is kind of cool. We're looking at this, uh, tap wrench here and this thing is absolutely monstrous and it actually feels very well made the the finish on it is a little glossy and snooky like but it feels extremely solid and uh, maybe it could use a little bit of oil here but that's probably just because it's brand new these really do look quite great that's uh, I'm, I'm really glad my buddy Pete got me turned on to these um, yeah we got the same semi flimsy screwdriver here so yeah, anyway, let's uh, actually go ahead and try these out and see how they work. All right, so this is what we're gonna be working on. This is what I refer to as a spider. I think that's what most people call it, but probably not its technical name. And what this does is it goes on the back of a lathe so that if you're turning a piece of material and uh, you know, you've got your piece of work sticking out the front of your truck and it's a long piece of work, so it goes all the way through the center of the lathe and back out the, uh, the side of the lathe, you know, instead of just flopping around in the hole that's back there, this slides in place and there's uh, a series of bolts, usually three, this one has four, that come through here and clamp the work in place. So that holds it steady and this whole thing spins with the, uh, what I'm gonna call the center shaft that goes through the center of a lathe. And uh, basically just holds a long piece of work steady when you're turning on one end of it that's out the, um, sticking out the front of the chuck. So. When I got this one, you know, it's got four holes here, 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 and here, and uh, and two of them were stripped out. So I've actually had the lathe for over a year now, and I've been meaning to fix this and never have. So they're gonna 
come into the, uh, the the center of the spider and you'll be able to crank them down like this and they'll grip down on a piece of material and hold it steady for you but with the half inch by 13 they fit perfectly together which tells me this is a half inch by 13 bolt and that works with taps it also works with other bolts you know if you uh i, I needed four of these so if i figured out i need three more of these, I can just take some random bolts, I don't have anything else in reach other than these, and, and if the threads interlock, then they're the same size, but if they don't, you know, like our larger tap didn't, then, you know, one's different than the other. And I'll just turn this handle, and that opens this up, and then we'll uh, just kind of crank down on it like that. So I'm just going to line up that tap in the hole to the best of my ability, squirt some of this uh, dark thread cutting oil, and uh, yeah, here we go. I'm pushing straight down into the part, and I'm going to keep going until, uh, until the thread has actually started to take, and that's kind of like what happens when a bolt actually starts to go into the, uh, the nut you're threading it into, you know when it's actually got a good grip, and right now it does because like I can move this around a little bit and that tap doesn't go anywhere. So from this point forward, anytime it uh, gets hard to turn, which it probably won't because this is cast iron, so it's like, you know, it's like the styrofoam of the metal world pretty much in its texture. But with steel, sometimes things get really hard to turn. Now, because I ate my Wheaties this morning, as Pete would say, uh, I could actually just tap this whole hole as is without breaking any chips because there's not really any chips to break because again it's cast iron so it's just kind of crumbling but if this were steel what I'd want to do is go about a half a turn and then back a quarter turn and about this point you'd hear it click and then it would turn a lot easier and that's how you know your chips are broken but again since we don't really have any chips on this so to speak it's just dust I'm gonna keep uh, turning this all the way down and it's cutting really easily you know, I, I have tapped cast iron before, but not like steel, so I can't really say this is cutting better than something else would on steel, for instance, especially because all cast iron's a little bit different. But, I mean, this is some pretty hard cast, and it had no issues with that at all. I mean, that was buttery smooth. This feels like a really smooth tap. So now what I'm going to do is back this out, and uh, Seth, can you hand me a bolt? One of those bolts over there. And once I have this thing removed out of here, what I'm going to do is take it over to the air hose ah! and blow all that junk in the threads out. So for now though, I'm just going to put this in here and maybe tighten down on it a little more. Yeah, this might not be the, stir the, the greatest tap wrench ever, but it's really friggin' sturdy. And I mean, for something that's included, it's actually quite nice. Alright, hey, thank you. And now I'm just going to thread this bolt in. And look at that, it's going right in. Yeah, it's going smooth. Tiny little bit of play in there, but definitely not much. It's a nice tight fit. Just like that, finger tight all the way down, no burrs, no nothing. Looks like this cuts some really nice threads, and um, for those of you that have never tapped a hole before, that's really all there is to it. There goes the chips. And yeah, this is actually working really well. It's cutting some nice smooth threads, that's for sure. But I'm not going to go too much further on this because there's really no reason to because we know it works. And I'm just going to back this off. The tools inside the cases seem to be every bit as awesome as I hoped they would be. Yeah, really impressed with this. Uh, really happy with my purchase here. And thanks for watching, everybody.